we're going to be going over how to uh, remove the uh, cluster on this 1996 Ford Taurus to repair the odometer. Uh, the odometer stopped working a while ago and haven't driven it for a while so we're going to try to sell this thing so the odometer needs to work to pass inspection. So we got to get all this trim off to get the whole cluster out and then to the uh, gears on the inside which probably broke on my truck and a lot of Fords like these older uh, 90 ones. The gears on the inside are made of uh, poor material plastics that just disintegrate over time. So that's going to be what's going to need to get replaced. And uh, the first step is to pull the radio out so you can get this trim piece off here. So I got the radio over here. And like a lot of the uh, old Fords, they got the two slots on each side for the special tools they make. I just use pieces of coat hanger. So what you do is you take your coat hanger or the tool, it doesn't really matter, and you stick it in two holes, push it in on both sides, and then simultaneously push out away from the radio. And it pushes on, let's see if I can get it, it pushes in here on these locks when it's inside the housing here, and then you can just pull it right out. So that's how to remove the radio, and then you got all the, this has the radio and also the climate control on it, so you got a whole bunch of connectors on the back, vacuum lines and everything. So after that, that allows you to get this trim piece out, which there's four bolts, one in the, each corner, top left, top right, and then the bottom left and right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out, and then we're going to get to the next step. Once you got your four bolts out, it's going to be loose over there and tight up towards the steering wheel. And all that has is just a few, see there's two clips on there, you just got to pull it straight back and they'll pop right out. Feels like it's going to break, but it should pull right out. So the next step is to get this trim piece off over here where the headlight switch is. And to do that, you got to remove the whole headlight switch. So I guess you should unplug your uh, battery if you want to because the headlights are going to be on. So you're going to turn the headlight switch all the way to on and then pull it out and then up underneath it's kinda hard to see there's a little slot directly underneath and then that will make the knob pry off and then after that you're gonna put the knob on upside down so I'll show you that when I so I get a free hand here okay you just stick a little screwdriver up in the slot and it pulls off and then you're gonna just fit the knob back on there just mess around with it until it pushes back on and then see it's upside down but in the off position so now you're going to just turn it all the way back to on and pull straight out. And the whole headlight switch is going to come out. And it's going to have two connectors on the back. Each one's going to have a little safety on it. Just so you, so you pull them out and then push down like a regular connector. So once this is out, this trim piece here should just pop out like the other side did. Got some bad lighting, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and then we're going to get to the next step. So that piece just pops right out, and on mine I got this little light thing. We never established what it was. We think it's for some sort of aftermarket security system, but as long as this doesn't need to come all the way out, just needs to be out of the way to get to this bolt right here. And so we got a bolt right there. Let's see if I can get up close so you can see it. Bolt here, right underneath. On the opposite side, you got a bolt here. And then you got two up in top, one there, and then one there, and to get it out you're going to need to put the gear shift as low as it will go. I also lowered the steering wheel to get more room. So just be mindful, you might roll a little bit or something if you put it all the way down in gear, so I uh, put the park brake on just in case. And that's going to allow us to get the last piece of trim out of the way, and then behind the trim is going to be a few more bolts that hold the actual cluster in. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this trim out, and then we're going to see what we need to do next. So we got our plastic trim off that covers the cluster and now you can see it's exposed. So we got four bolts removed to start pulling the cluster out, one in each corner. And uh, so far all these bolts have been 7 millimeter that I've encountered. They also have spots for uh, Torx bits to go in there, but uh, I just use a regular socket because it's easy enough. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out and then the only other thing i got to watch out for is when we pulled out the gear shift selector. Let me move the camera around here. On some vehicles it comes out different than others so you just got to be careful so you don't mess it up so once I start pulling it out 
I want to see how it comes out, then I'll show you that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these four bolts and go to the next step. Okay, so I just got done the trickiest part, I think, and it's removing the gear shift uh, indicator. So right now, I got the cluster just sitting back, almost flat in there. And uh, this is where the little cable goes in here. Let me move you around. This is where the cable goes in to move the needle. And I took that bolt out first because I thought maybe I could just pull the cable off, but that's not the case. So you don't need to pull that out. Uh, this one's bolted in, and I look closely, and you can see that this is where the shift the indicator is, and it's sandwiched in between the cluster and the plastic cover by a bolt there and a bolt there. So they're 5.5 millimeter. And once you take them out, it's kind of tricky with one hand here, but you should be able to pick the cluster up, and it will slide out. Okay, had to shut the camera off there. I got it out. The only thing is, it's just a little bit difficult because you got to hold hold this up and then kind of pry it out. So once that's out, the cluster should be able to pull out a little further. And then once it's out, you just got to disconnect all the wires on the back. So I just pull it out, pull it around. You can kind of get to the back side here. So looks like we got one here and then another connector back there. Should be able to just pull these out. It's one. I can't see anything because the sun's right there. There's the other one. These are just like regular connectors. Just pull that out. And there's your cluster. All removed. So the last little bit was a hard to follow there, but you get the idea. So now I just gotta tear this apart and get to the gears in the back. So I've got the cluster inside where it's easy to work on. I'll put some paper towels down because this thing had some mystery grease on the back and ruined my pants but the first thing I want to do is go around and move all the rest of those gold screws all over. I already got them out up here. Those are uh, I think they're 5.5 millimeter as well. Yeah they're 5.5 millimeter. So then you can pull this plastic cover off. And after you pull the plastic cover off, there's this like uh, shield thing that comes off as well. And then to get into the odometer on this 96, you got to pull out these gauges are separate. I like the uh, fuel and, and temperature gauges one, the speedometer and odometer are own, and tachometer its own as well. So you got to pull the center one out. To do that, you got to take the, sp the needle off the, for the speedometer. It's kind of difficult, so you got to pry it off this tiny little pin here. You got to be careful. So I actually ended up using uh, this really small, like putty knife, worked pretty good on one side, and I used a butter knife uh, on the other side, and I pried in the opposite direction so it would pull up straight. So I'd push down with one and pull up on the other, and that popped off. And then you can go pry this these plastic pieces around very easily and then it pops off and that's because see these pegs on the back go into these metal connections for uh, electricity and stuff like that so and signals so now we got this out now we just gotta get the uh, odometer itself and they're gonna be there's three screws right there on the back and it'll separate from this plastic so I'm gonna pull it apart and then we can really see where we're at the odometer assembly from the whole speedometer assembly, uh, at least a face of it here, and you can see this is uh, your total miles, and this is where your trip miles are. This is your little motor for the speedometer needle. So the way this works is it gets a signal, there's a sensor somewhere along the lines that says the speed, it sends a signal up through the dashboard to this connector here connector to a certain voltage that that sensor sends to this motor it tells this motor how fast to spin and then down in there vertically there's a worm gear that drives just a regular straight cut gear here which is attached to your you know your miles your mileage and then it goes through a couple other gears here to drive the trip odometer so this is the same case in my truck. My truck is a 97 F-150 and a lot of the Fords from the 90s had this issue. 
same exact gear broke. Not the drive gear for the mileage, but the worm gear broke. And it doesn't look like it from here. So I'm going to pull this out. It, sh it should be on a shaft just like the needle, but if I pull this, get a hold on it. There you go. You can see it just kind of fell apart. See it split right in half. There's the other half down there. Here's this half right here. So it just gets old, real soft. You can feel it's kind of soft. And it just breaks in half and doesn't engage that gear anymore. See where it is. Doesn't engage that gear. So now I gotta get that's not too hard. That motor will pop out of there, and you just pull that gear off and put a new one on, or you go get in a whole new motor, I'm sure. So the thing is, I actually don't have the new parts yet. I just went to pull it apart to make sure that was the problem. I mean, they're like 10 bucks, but you never know. Could be a sensor or something. So let me see if I can get that motor out. Show you the whole process here. So I got the motor uh, disengaged, I guess, from its holder, and it sits in there like this. And you can see these two ears it has, and they're both bent up on the opposite sides. So it's only going to go one way, and it sits down in there sits down in one ear goes down in here see if I can get this on camera and right there at the screwdriver tip it's got a little ledge on that back side on the front side it doesn't have as much of a ledge you can see it's kinda of angled up there so if you grab it from the bottom and twist it in the correct way it's only gonna twist one way you'll be careful because this plastic will break so if you twist it in the right way this front ear will start to come up and over that little ledge and once that'll come up and over and stay there a little bit then you want to come in the back and you might get lucky it might come right off on yours but you want to come here to the back and then you're going to pry up on this ear on the metal ear just a little bit you can get that screwdriver to sit up in there and you can come finish turning it and just lifting that up will help it pop, pop right out so you gotta work it a little bit but it just twist pops out. You don't even need to take this connector off. So the next step is pop the rest of that gear off that shaft right there. And to do that, you probably just get away with a little screwdriver or something. It should slide right off. And you're going to get a new gear. It's going to come in a set more than likely. It's going to have this gear. It's going to have this worm gear. I can tell you right now, I'm feeling it. This is a different kind of plastic. So that's probably not going to break right away so I wouldn't even worry about replacing that because you got to pull this whole assembly out I'd replace what's broken let it roll so you're gonna get a new gear on that set and it's just gonna go right down on there in fact I might have the I might have my old gear for my truck I'll pull that out and show you but that's how you do it otherwise you just stick it in there the way you took it out for reassembly purposes I mean that's the easiest way so hopefully this helped I'm gonna go pull that gear out if I can find it and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we go. This is uh, what come off my truck. This is the new drive gear for my truck. As you can see that's a lot bigger and a lot different than the drive gear for the Taurus. Which is right here. You can see that comparison. So, but I didn't replace this because mine wasn't broken. But here's my broke worm gear from the truck. And you can see that sucker, it just split right off there at the top. The top half split right there just like this one did right here so obviously that's a weak point on these Fords. Here's the thing I bought this for uh, the part I bought for my truck is for 90, advertises 94 to 98 Mustang so obviously this isn't gonna fit if this is what's broke on yours don't get the one for the Mustang but you know you can look up and find the correct part but you can see the base on this let me see if it focuses here. These two gears are just about the same. But I'm sure they have one advertised for a Taurus part, so hopefully that's easy enough for you to follow. And uh, any questions, uh, leave them. I'll get back to you. So hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching.